Hello, my name is Stephen David Manning. This is The Full Journey, the most complete story of what the fertility wheel represents and how its discovery came to be. Take the time to read it at your own pace and let the knowledge absorb over time. It will be worth your while. While slowly understanding and crafting the fertility wheel, I extensively researched diverse cultures and their beliefs. As a result, I discovered numerous intriguing connections to ancient religions, revealing their remarkable similarities. I'm here to share something special, and I hope you'll find it all as exciting, interesting, and inspiring as I do. I know at least some of you will. After years of research, fine-tuning, and listening to ancestral wisdom speak through the stars, I have uncovered what I believe to be the truth behind the zodiac and its more profound and accurate meaning. Over the course of this presentation, I will share with you a new but ancient alignment to the symbols of the zodiac, and that realignment is what allows the skies to speak to us, teach us, and ultimately help humans thrive, even in the face of considerable hardships. Through this careful realignment, I have successfully transformed and redeemed the symbols into a perpetual farmer's almanac. This guide should be used as a supplementary calendar to guide farming. The name changes and the fertility wheel emerges. I'll start by explaining its new name. The fertility wheel was chosen to reflect its direct connection to the fertility of animals, the land, and plants. The name also acknowledges the valuable role that the Fertile Crescent played in the development of early civilizations. I wanted to find a synonym for the word zodiac, which simply means wheel. So I will now use the phrase fertility wheel to describe what I have created or revealed. It is important to understand that the fertility wheel is not a static symbol, but rather a living testament to an ongoing relationship with humanity and nature's natural rhythm. Importantly, Seven symbols have been clarified, and one has been changed completely. I associate a different month for each sign, and we align with the equinoxes and solstices. With these and other variations between the two zodiacs, it is evident that the current label zodiac is no longer appropriate as the intended objectives of each are significantly different or divergent. I gave it a name that describes its sole intent, to understand the fertility of the life around us, the fertility wheel. The animals are not random, as many scholars believed in the past, and they absolutely need to be in a specific order. It becomes a fertility wheel or perpetual farmer's almanac if you understand how to use and align the symbols with the equinoxes and solstices. For every location in the northern hemisphere, the sheep-goat symbol begins on the fall equinox, shifting the whole wheel over five months. The sheep and goat are interchangeable in my wheel, not a singular animal. This is when they enter their rut or their peak mating time. The introduction of seasonal breeders. I will share with you why this month is used for the goats and sheep, which are seasonal breeders. I could have solved this in minutes if I had initially remembered seasonal breeders. Seasonal breeders are horses, sheep, goats, cats, pigs, frogs, lizards, and most birds and deer. Cows are sometimes listed as seasonal breeders but have two distinct breeding times, although 80% breed in the spring. Fall mating of cows is often due to climate, weather, and necessity. It's easy to see the correlation now. The rest of the symbols are easier to understand once you have a base. The stars themselves are not the marker for the fertility wheel. The animals themselves will represent one of 12 different star clusters depending on where in the world you live. The one area where it is correctly calibrated is around 97 degrees longitude. The goat or sheep symbol is always after the fall equinox wherever you live because that is their peak mating time. It is my belief that both the fertility wheel guide and the zodiac have their origins in or near the fertile crescent. This region is widely regarded as the cradle of civilization. Once we agree that these symbols represent the animals with the correct months, then if you understand precession, you will understand these two systems emerged at vastly different times. If this fertility wheel did exist in the past, it would have been pre-flood earth, much older than we thought possible. While slowly understanding and crafting the fertility wheel, I extensively researched diverse cultures and their beliefs. As a result, I discovered numerous intriguing connections to ancient religions, revealing their remarkable similarities. 
Before I go any further, please understand that this new system is a multi-layered series of wheels inside wheels and will take some time to explain. I will cover much throughout this presentation, so I appreciate your patience as we weave through profound and subtle changes. At this point, you can let go of anything you understand to be true about the current Zodiac, as we are now moving into an entirely different and exciting territory. I hope you are intrigued. Now, to continue. Shedding Light on Fertility in the Fertility Wheel Let's clarify a little about the sign of the woman and twins. The woman in this position, both her place on the wheel and the way she is sitting, is symbolic of the starting point of human reproduction. At the same time, Gemini, also referred to as the twins, signifies newborns born nine months after the appearance of the woman's sign, symbolizing fertility and the resulting childbirth. This was humanity's initial indication that the depiction was a fertility wheel. The twins needed to be portrayed as newborns rather than adults, as it would have been a simple clue for many to comprehend. Seasonal breeders are animal species that only mate during specific times of the year. Early spring is often the most optimal time for the animals to give birth because it allows for the survival of their offspring. Factors such as pleasant temperatures, food and water availability, and other environmental conditions are essential for ensuring successful breeding and offspring production. For many of these species, birthing occurs from February until May, shortly after new green growth appears, and when temperatures are warm enough to reduce the risk of hypothermia in the young. This is also when grass and water become more abundant, especially around the spring equinox. Knowing this, it is easy to understand its message. Now for this wheel, the symbol on the zodiac wheel that appears as a centaur is in fact a representation of both a man and a horse. Each of these figures has its unique meaning and message. Notably, the horse symbol aligns seamlessly with the other animal symbols on the wheel. Similarly, the man holds significance in his respective month. However, the combination of the man and the horse conveys a third and equally vital message for that particular month. All three interpretations are critical in understanding the intricacies of the fertility wheel. These symbols are employed independently to comprehend diverse facets of the fertility wheel guide. For example, the goatfish and scales symbols should have been particularly challenging to decipher, but ultimately, they were not. With some time and research, I have successfully resolved the goatfish symbol and reimagined or changed the scales symbol to the correct animal needed to complete this system. This transformation proved to be the linchpin of the guide anchoring the correct animal with the equinoxes. The fertility wheel is a valuable resource for comprehending the optimal timing for animal breeding, fishing, and basic farming techniques for growing crops. This information is critical for the survival and prosperity of any budding civilization. It shows the optimum time to plant and harvest wheat and possible dangers one might encounter through the months. As stated above, it is a multi-layered wheel inside a wheel. The fertility wheel serves as a visual representation of agricultural and farming practices that align with the four seasons as well as the position of the sun and stars. It's essential to note that the order of animals and their respective time frames remain constant, similar to the spring equinox, which typically occurs around March 21st every year. Aligning the fertility wheel and its symbols utilizing the equinoxes and solstices as fixed reference points is an uncomplicated and straightforward process from any location on the globe. The sun is the source of all life, and knowing its movements enables farmers to enhance their crop yields and increase animal breeding efficacy. I encourage everyone to look up seasonal breeders and basic farming techniques to validate my conclusions and verify my findings to discover the truth about the stars and how to use the fertility wheel and the stars to guide you. Once you redeem the wheel, it is easy to understand the original idea or intention. With understandable messages that relate to the symbols, the fertility wheel is a simple pictorial representation that conveys agriculture's fundamental principles to literate and illiterate individuals and humans across time and all languages. Once each location finds its set point, it becomes a guide for humanity's survival. The key to future human survival. In the event of a world-altering catastrophe, 
the ability to calibrate with the sun and interpret and align visual images with the stars could serve as a means of sharing vital ideas or concepts that could form the basis for a new civilization. Moreover, unlike languages which may become obsolete, pictographs have the potential to endure for centuries and can be deciphered and discovered over time. Understanding the potential impact of cataclysmic events on future civilizations is crucial. By mastering the interpretation of visual imagery and aligning the fertility wheel, you can impart valuable insights and concepts that could serve as a bedrock for future generations to comprehend agriculture. The fertility wheel will remain a timeless guide. It is our duty to impart this knowledge in a way that is understandable to those who may need help understanding our language or those living in an era when it has become obsolete, forgotten, or misinterpreted. By teaching the significance of this knowledge and the art of aligning these symbols, we can ensure these ideas and concepts continue to inspire and lead humanity, even amid profound change and uncertainty. To the guardians, watchers, observers, and chroniclers or keepers of information, I hope to share some knowledge with the world to benefit all who come across it. These ideas might soon be an anthropic principle because even I would like an explanation for the universe's apparent fine-tuning. I have been presented with a unique opportunity to bring into existence a wondrous agricultural tool for survival that has yet to be conceived of or witnessed by humanity in this timeline. Significant changes for significant impact. What sets the fertility wheel apart from other zodiacs is its exclusion of the scales symbol, which has traditionally been a keystone symbol or representation in every historical zodiac. The scales probably meant the equality of the day and night, which happens on both equinoxes and that understanding has also been lost to time. The scales were positioned right after the spring equinox to let people know that light and darkness are equal and to have a gauge to set the clock. The fertility wheel clarifies the functional significance of the symbols, separating them from what evolved to be the zodiac as we know it today and dispelling any notions of mysticism or the occult. I researched various traditions extensively to understand why the nomads, shepherds, and other herders considered the goatfish significant and why it is an appropriate name for the animal. However, for the sake of my wheel, I will refer to it by the name of this known animal common to the area, but I will keep it a mystery for just a few more minutes. It is crucial to recognize that the fertility wheel's effectiveness depends on the alignment and the accuracy of its animal symbols representing the months of the year. Originating from the fertile crescent, where the agricultural revolution first took root, the wheel's 12 symbols were a reliable guide for early farmers. However, substituting one of these animal symbols with the scales or Libra emblem undermined the wheel's two primary objectives, rendering it ineffective as a guide or tool. It is essential to understand that the creatures on the wheel are native to the Fertile Crescent, a region renowned as the birthplace of civilization. This area played a pivotal role in the evolution of our society from hunter-gatherers and fishermen to an agricultural-based community. This was where the roots of settled farming were established as people cleared and modified the natural vegetation to cultivate crops. This region in the Middle East includes modern-day Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, Israel, Jordan, Egypt, Kuwait's northern region, Turkey's southern region, and the western portion of Iran. The fertility wheel transcends religion. The fertility wheel conveys its message, and I have mine. I want to emphasize that my intention is not to influence your religious beliefs or lack thereof. The fertility wheel can serve as the foundation for various beliefs, with the stars or heavens guiding humankind. It provides insight into how the light of the sun influences marine and land life. It shows nature's natural rhythm and when to plant wheat and oats in most places. The sun brings life to the world and all upon it. The zodiac and or fertility wheel predated most organized religions and was a pictogram conveying important messages of cultivation and survival beyond any language. It was a guide to help all people live better lives. For those who hold spiritual beliefs or have faith in a higher power, it is believed that celestial signs are bestowed upon us to provide guidance. I hope you can perceive this message as a divine sign from the heavens, and may it strengthen your trust in your faith. 
Meanwhile, if you place your trust in science, mathematics, and nature's continual yearly rhythm, may this revelation bring you contentment and solace, knowing that the vast majority of phenomena can be comprehended through acquired knowledge. There are those like myself who encounter and embrace both aspects. This is a brief history of how I discovered the significance of the fertility wheel and the journey I took to comprehend its teachings. At this point, are you wondering how I came to these conclusions or what my sources are? Here's where I'll interject a bit of my own story. This concept of the fertility wheel called to me for many years before I had any reason to follow up on these nagging thoughts, inclinations, and the messages of my dreams. To begin to understand the fertility wheel's meaning and unlock this mystery, I needed the internet and time to research. Then came the pandemic, and suddenly, I had what felt like endless time. My access to extensive information on the internet and my fascination with astronomy and archaeoastronomy inspired me to notice the stars in a new way and study them from a different perspective. I lived around farmland and later the desert with lush and fertile mountains behind. Living near a fishing and crabbing community aided my understanding of the animals on the wheel. Living in the age of technology made research easily verifiable and enjoyable, and the pandemic gave me ample time to delve even deeper into the fertility wheel's teachings. My familiarity with the animals represented on the wheel stems from my experience living around all of them at one time or another. When I lived in Northern California, I frequently drove past farms, ranches, and pastures, and was surrounded by people who worked in agriculture. As a result, I developed a basic understanding of farmers' seasonal tasks and the rhythms of caring for these animals, which proved key in my interpretation of the fertility wheel. Taking a leap of faith into the meaning and messages of my dreams and visions led me to understand how the sun and the fertility wheel can be invaluable guides for humanity. I was instructed to observe the eastern horizon when the first five stars become visible which would indicate the rising constellation and associated fertility wheel symbol marking the task for the month. By using my smartphone, I could track the precise position of stars on the horizon and watch the constellations in South Dakota, which has a longitude of approximately 97 degree. Being in a different longitude, even by 30 degree, would have incorrectly identified the month symbol. Only one of 12 areas in the world could see it correctly due to precession, so I had to be in the right place, at the right time, with the knowledge to understand the meaning. The stars move rapidly across the sky due to the Earth's rotation, making it fortunate to be in the correct location to interpret what I saw. A star moves approximately one degree every four minutes or 15 degree in one hour. Therefore, to have a fixed point of reference for the stars' positions, one should observe a specific group of stars at the same time every year, such as an equinox or solstice. In just two hours, the constellation on the horizon will change. I noticed the constellations or animal signs correlated with the depicted creature's mating season. The fish and crab signs accurately indicated the optimal time to catch them. Just before the spring equinox, I aimed my smartphone toward the horizon when five stars first appeared. And there, I noticed the Virgo constellation. My primary objective was to truly determine if I had found myself in the perfect location with the knowledge to comprehend the celestial signs correctly, distinguishing it from most other places in the world. If the animal signs aligned well, there may be a reason for the woman to be placed in this exact position. Now let's continue learning about the workings of the wheel. Meaning of Virgo. I knew the reasons for the animal's position, so now I had to find the justification for why a woman, and specifically which woman from the many stories and myths from ancient times, was to be represented before or after the spring equinox and why. Upon researching the origin of the word Virgo, I discovered that virgin comes from the Latin and Greek Virgo and means maiden or young and unmarried woman. We changed the meaning to untouched, but the term virgin held a distinct meaning in ancient times. It was a maiden or woman, nothing about her sexuality. Various goddesses such as Inanna, Ishtar, Isis, Astarte, Aset, Anahita, Aphrodite, and Diana were goddesses of some combination of fertility, 
childbirth, sexuality, and more. These goddesses represented female empowerment. They embodied the essence of femininity and strength, serving as goddesses of fertility. In addition, each culture portrayed these goddesses with distinct traits that symbolized the aspects of femininity and power that were necessary or desired by their people. I wanted to see if there was a link or connection between the depiction of a maiden, woman, queen, or goddess in the spring equinox in former times. Specifically, I aimed to discover whether the figure of Virgo, representing a woman, was associated with or featured in any ancient festivities during or around this month. Several cultures use the spring equinox as the start of the new year. One example is the Iranian or Persian New Year, also known as No Ruz, which usually falls on the vernal equinox around March 20th. Other cultures that celebrate the new year around the spring equinox include the Kurdish New Year, the Balinese New Year, and the Hindu New Year in some regions of India. Additionally, the Jewish holiday of Passover, which falls in the spring, can be considered a celebration of the Jewish people's liberation and their spiritual new year. Those examples were good, but I sought something more specific and ancient. I really needed the earliest recorded festival with a woman at the spring equinox. Early versions of the zodiac depict the woman holding a sheaf of wheat. Virgin wheat, also known as einkorn, is the first type of wheat cultivated by humans. This time of year was also called the furrow and goddess Shala's ear of grain, indicating a strong connection to agriculture. Another clue to this association is the identification of Persephone, the daughter of Demeter, the goddess of agriculture, as Virgo. I thought to myself, could one of them be the inspiration of Virgo? I searched ancient religions and cultures, hoping to discover the correct connection between the maiden and the spring equinox. Before developing an interest in the fertility wheel, I studied the Egyptian A10 sun disk, which I believe was a form of the fertility wheel and later became one of the Egyptian zodiacs. In one depiction, their centaur has a scorpion tail and wings and the man has a bow and arrow. I do not know what it was trying to represent, maybe the order of the animals. It seems mystical or magical to me. I was already fascinated by Egyptian culture and had started researching various aspects of their beliefs. Recently, I have developed some new theories after much research. While exploring the stories of Aten, the Egyptian zodiacs, and the similarities between different cultures, I wondered about their origins and whether they may have originated in another, even older civilization. To investigate this, I delved into the oldest cultures I could find, leading me to the Mesopotamians. The earliest recorded New Year festival, Akitu, dates back to around 2000 BCE in Mesopotamia, where the Sumerian New Year began in the spring around the equinox. The New Year's festival, Akitu, centered around Dumuzid and Inanna. This celebration was a tribute to the love and fertility of the land and animals, and was shared through ritual and mythology. One such ritual was the sacred marriage or sacred sexual union between the two deities, which was believed to guarantee the fertility of the land and its inhabitants. Also, Inanna was known to wave her wand over the land to enhance its fertility and everything upon it. So I began reading more about Inanna and Dumuzid. Inanna is the ancient Mesopotamian goddess associated with fertility, agriculture, and childbirth. Given her prominent role in these domains, it's possible that she inspired the astrological sign of Virgo, which also depicts a woman holding a sheaf of wheat or a wand. Despite the sign's association with virginity and the birth of twins, which can seem contradictory, it's worth considering how Inanna's multifaceted nature as a goddess of fertility, sex, and childbirth might have influenced the depiction and myth of the corrected meaning. This highlights astrological symbols' rich cultural history and complexity and how they can draw on various mythological and religious traditions. The festival of Akitu was a traditional springtime celebration held during the spring equinox, which typically falls on March 21st. Initially, I questioned whether Virgo should be associated with the month before or after the spring equinox, from February 22nd to March 21st, or March 22nd to April 21st, so I decided to do more research. 
after consulting the Encyclopedia Britannica, I discovered that Dumuzid and Inanna were known to celebrate their love between February and March. This is why I selected February through March to depict the woman or maiden symbol. This time fit perfectly, as you will see shortly. Based on my research and analysis, I believe that Inanna and her twin brother represent the equinoxes. Dumuzid represented the summer solstice, and his sister Gestinana was associated with the winter solstice. Inanna was also associated with fertility and agriculture, as symbolized by her waving of the scepter and the fertilization of the land and everything on it for the coming year. Understanding the reason behind the precise placement of symbols and their meaning was crucial for making the wheel a guide or tool. Unfortunately, humanity has overlooked or ignored the vital clues of mothers and newborns. The association between the woman symbol and the birth of twins, occurring nine months after, is a significant aspect of recognizing or knowing it is a fertility wheel. Let's begin to weave things together. This next paragraph sums everything up, and then I'll explain the individual signs. My theory is that the fertility wheel symbols were deliberately sequenced to provide valuable guidance for understanding seasonal breeding animals, crop farming, fishing, and potential hazards. Each land animal symbol represented the optimal months for the peak mating times of that animal depicted. It also correlates to when it is best for sowing and harvesting crops, including wheat, barley, oats, corn, and other grains. By harnessing the natural rhythms of the seasons, ancient cultures could successfully move through the seasons, keep themselves safe and secure enough food to supply the community, and pass this knowledge from generation to generation, ensuring our species' propagation. These symbols on the wheel also indicated times of potential danger, such as storms, floods, or dangerous nocturnal creatures allowing people to prepare and take necessary precautions. The careful sequencing of these symbols serves as a practical and essential tool. So how do we use this wheel to help start and support an agricultural community? Animal farming, also known as animal husbandry, is the practice of breeding, managing, and caring for domesticated animals to produce valuable products such as meat, milk, skins, fiber, and animal waste for fertilizer. Farming, or crop husbandry, encompasses the knowledge and skills necessary for cultivating various crops, including the preparation of soil through techniques such as tilling and plowing to ensure optimal growth. A thriving farming process requires the selection of the right seeds and planting in nutrient-rich soil at the appropriate times. In addition, farmers or anyone who wants to feed themselves and or their community must possess the necessary knowledge, tools, and equipment for harvesting, threshing, winnowing, and potentially storing the grain. Agriculture is the science of farming, including cultivating the ground for growing crops and raising animals to provide food, wool, and other products. This plays a symbiotic role with raising farm animals, as it involves using animal waste to fertilize the soil, and the plants and crops feed the animals and humans. Manure and fish parts, in particular, are natural fertilizers essential for maintaining fertile land and supporting the successful growth of crops. Therefore, it is necessary to understand the significance and importance of these practices to recognize how they contribute to the food system and community survival. Having knowledge of the fishing season was necessary, as alternate or additional food sources were needed for the winter months when starvation was common. Fishing was crucial as it enabled people to catch, prepare, and preserve enough fish to last for months by drying, smoking, or salting them. Additionally, the unused parts of the fish can be converted into natural fertilizer for crops as they contain essential nutrients like nitrogen and trace minerals. The unused fish parts can be cut up, added to soil, crushed, and mixed with water to create a nutrient-rich fish fertilizer that nourishes and supports plant growth. Shellfish are excellent sources of protein that can be harvested during the late fall through the winter months, providing a valuable addition to the food supply. Unused crab parts also make great fertilizer. The lions and scorpions in this region often killed both livestock and people. Keeping the people and animals in the community safe was another key component to ensuring survival and proliferation. 
The wheel highlights the peak mating period of these nocturnal and dangerous animals, which were very common in the area. This information can be valuable in educating people that these animals are often active at night. Learning about different dangers can help prevent potential encounters or accidents. The fertility wheel also predicts flash floods, which can be both a blessing and a curse, as they can bring fertility to the land and pose a significant threat. These three potential dangers, namely nocturnal predators, hungry lions, venomous scorpions, and flash floods, can pose a risk to people and livestock anytime and are active when you sleep and are unprepared. All these practices correspond to humankind's transformation and evolution from a simple fishing, hunting, and gathering society to one that now relied heavily on agriculture and animal husbandry practices. This transition marks a significant milestone in our cultural and technological development. Knowledge of the fertility wheel would help nomads start and settle a community. It's crucial to have a specific reason for the location of each symbol, with a valid explanation rooted in survival, farming, agriculture, and dangers that would greatly benefit all who understood the stars and the sun. The animals and creatures must be in the position stated. Having the woman and newborns fit perfectly within that pattern is miraculous and edifying and left me in amazement at how perfect this wheel is. To have every animal, sign, and symbol fit perfectly will help humanity understand nature's natural rhythms and makes the wheel a gift from the heavens. Here is when you may cease to be your known zodiac sign and understand the differences between the two. I am neither advocating for nor against the original zodiac, as the fertility wheel is an entirely different system. Here is how the fertility wheel should be aligned and where I clarify the signs and their new months. I will now show the correspondence between the months and why each character must be in that specific position on the fertility wheel February 22nd through March 21st. Maiden, woman, goddess. Referring to the female symbol on the fertility wheel as a virgin, could lead people to fail to see the significance of twins or newborns born nine months after a woman's pregnancy and shown nine months after the woman on the zodiac. This could be because the twins were shown as adults and the woman was a virgin. We forgot about the possibility of childbirth. This easy observation was overlooked for centuries and is a key reason this clue remained invisible to the human mind. Using the term newborns instead of twins and depicting them as such is a meaningful and impactful change. The placement of each zodiac sign and symbol holds great significance. Take, for instance, the sign of the woman on the zodiac or the fertility wheel. By counting nine spaces forward or nine months, we arrive at the symbol of Gemini, which should embody newborn babies. But it is not enough to simply acknowledge the correlation between the woman's sign and the birth of twins. To truly utilize this knowledge as a valuable tool, one must understand its reasoning. This insight has been overlooked or disregarded in the past. People should have recognized this detail. Let us appreciate the subtle nuances that hold the key to unlocking the guide of the past. When I was 10 or 11, I noticed the Gemini kids were nine months after the woman. I was just a child of the earth and stars making observations of the zodiac and childbirth. The typical duration of a woman's pregnancy is approximately 280 days, equivalent to 40 weeks or roughly 9 months. In ancient times, the ability to predict a mother's due date was a crucial and highly valued skill and may have even been perceived as a form of witchcraft by people who were not taught the gestation time of humans. Individuals could accurately estimate when the mother would give birth, reinforcing the fundamental nature of the wheel's knowledge and usefulness. Even if the woman conceived at a different time, one could still determine the expected delivery date by counting nine spaces on the wheel. In ancient times, February and March were considered the most advantageous time for conceiving. This was because the expectant mother could still contribute to preparing the fields, and planting and harvesting the crops would be easier in the early stages of pregnancy. She could participate in planting winter wheat and barley in September and October. By giving birth in December, the mother would have several months to recover during the period when agricultural work was minimal. Typically, the postpartum period is around six weeks, 
during which the mother may be unable to return to her pre-pregnancy state or activities. However, she could begin helping with fieldwork or planting again in the spring. Early spring was the most favorable time for women to conceive in ancient times, given its benefits in agricultural activities and postpartum recovery. The fact that the celebration of Inanna and Dumuzid's love, which revolved around fertility, childbirth, pregnancy, and other related themes, took place between February and March, only strengthens the argument for placing the female symbol in its appropriate position on the wheel, February to March. Which then brings us nine months later, November 21st through December 21st. Newborns. To emphasize the theme of fertility, the fertility wheel should feature symbols that represent newborn babies rather than twins of adult age, which is the current representation of Gemini in many designs. These symbols are not derived from ancient Greek or Roman myths, biblical characters, or any other deity, but instead symbolize the concepts of childbirth, newborns, and the perpetuation of the species. Using these symbols, the fertility wheel can clearly convey its purpose and evoke a sense of wonder and appreciation for the miracle of birth. The symbol of the woman is directly before the spring equinox. Allow me to tell you about the spring equinox around March 22nd in the Northern Hemisphere. The spring equinox or vernal equinox happens when the sun moves across the equator and starts to move north in the sky. This event signals the beginning of spring with longer and warmer days to follow. On this day, daylight and darkness are of equal duration, roughly 12 hours each. Over the next six months, the amount of sunlight will increase and exceed the amount of darkness. The light in the sky will continue to increase until the summer solstice, when there will be approximately 14 hours of daylight. This period is the opportune time for sowing seeds, and as the seeds take root and sprout, the land becomes a canvas of regrowth and renewal. Crops emerge from the soil, and soon an abundance of nourishment is bestowed upon us. Simultaneously, the animal kingdom experiences a surge of new life, with numerous births. The spring equinox is the season of revitalization. Inanna waved her wand, life was anew, and this was a magical time of new possibilities. It was a new day. Regarding the fertility wheel and its sequence, this sign would typically be the scales, following Virgo or the maiden. But I have another symbol in mind, a sign that perfects the wheel. This time from March 22nd to April 21st is the start of spring, and the correct animal must be shown to represent fertility in both land and animals. This time from March 22nd to April 21st is the start of spring, and the correct animal must be shown to represent fertility in both land and animals. Therefore, replacing it with an animal symbol that accurately represents the concept of fertility in plants and animals would make it a fertility wheel that many could understand. Stay with me as I explain this new concept. As someone with first-hand knowledge of Northern California's agricultural practices, I know when dairy cows typically mate. Initially, I replaced the scales with a cow symbol. However, upon closer inspection of the fertility wheel, I discovered a symbol that already represented a bull next to the ram symbol. As cattle have a gestation period comparable to humans, lasting approximately nine months, and there was already a cattle symbol in another position only seven spaces or months away in one direction or five months away in the other direction on the wheel would lead to a discrepancy in gestation times. Given the striking similarity in gestation periods between cows and humans, which both span approximately nine months, the absence of a calf accompanying the cow in the specified context renders the placement of a cow symbol in that position seemingly inappropriate. Having problems with my original ideas made me look for other alternatives, and it occurred to me that this didn't reflect cow gestation times. I won't reveal the replacement animal right now as I want to add an element of suspense to this mystery. However, by the end of this discussion, I want you to guess both the replacement animal and the goatfish symbol. This mystery has perplexed humanity for thousands of years, so waiting a few more moments won't hurt, and I promise the wait will be worth it. Between April 22nd and May 21st, the scorpion is the astrological sign on the fertility wheel, so I researched their mating habits online. 
Scorpions mate during spring and summer and give birth to live offspring, known as scorpions. The venom of scorpions can be dangerous, and the Middle East is home to some of the most deadly species in the world. Scorpions with thick tails and small pinchers are usually venomous, as their primary weapon is their sting, while those with big pinchers use them for catching prey and rely less on their venom. In the areas where I was in Mexico, a scorpion sting was similar to a bee sting and posed little threat. During my time in northern Baja, Mexico, ironically on the same latitude as Ur or Mesopotamia, I observed various creatures, such as lizards, scorpions, snakes, and tarantulas, in the spring and summer months. Despite finding several scorpions in my house yearly, I always removed and released them unharmed. One can typically look at the size of their tail and pinchers to identify venomous scorpions. Let's move on to the summer solstice shifting between June 20th, 22. The onset of summer in the northern hemisphere marks the summer solstice. This is when the Earth is at its farthest point in orbit, where the North Pole tilts approximately 23.5 degrees towards the sun, resulting in a long day with 14 hours of sunlight and a short night of only 10 hours. After June 23rd, the duration of daylight hours will gradually decrease until approximately December 21st. May 22nd through June 21st has been the centaur since Zodiacs began, but it changed to a bow and arrow on many modern versions and as the wrong animal in a few others. I realize this pictogram has several meanings, the time to mate mares and to use horses to hunt or harvest crops and work together. To emphasize the significance of the bond between humans and horses, the centaur, a half-human and half-horse creature, is featured in almost all ancient zodiac signs. The man or the centaur's upper half holds a bow and arrow, poised to strike. This image symbolizes the close relationship between humans and horses, who have worked and hunted together for centuries. As someone who has spent time around horses, including volunteering at a friend's equestrian center, I am familiar with their mating habits during the summer months. This highlights the importance of horses in agriculture and other aspects of human life. May 22nd through June 21st is now the horse or mare for mating purposes and the combination of the mare and the shepherd for the harvest. Light is the controlling factor in mares coming into heat. Mares' reproductive cycle is mainly regulated by the amount of light they receive. As the days become longer, mares slowly come into heat and experience a peak in their breeding period between June 1st and June 30th, when they receive 14 hours of daylight. Therefore, mares are considered long-day breeders. Remember, a man is on the horse, so he must also have a meaning. According to historical accounts, Dumuzid, also known as Dumuzi, Tammuz, and later Adonis, was a deity associated with agriculture, shepherds, and food. He was considered a god of fertility, renewal, and protection, and was even credited with the ability to provide milk and lead people or animals to fresh water. The mare and the shepherd are instrumental to my wheel, and I want to acknowledge them both thoroughly. May 22nd through June 21st is also the shepherd and mare for the harvest, not only for the mare's mating cycle. During the summer months, the harvest season reaches its peak. For instance, barley is usually harvested in early June, while wheat, rye, and oats are harvested in July. Dumuzid, also known as the god of shepherds, food, and agriculture, is often associated with May, June, and July in different cultures, possibly depending on the crops being harvested in that region. The same question arises, do you put him before the summer solstice or after the event to properly show he is the summer solstice? As the god of food, milk, and fish provider, Dumuzid has been revered and celebrated in numerous cultures throughout history from ancient times and is still relevant in many cultures today. His significance can be seen in various religious texts and cultural traditions, including the Babylonian calendar, Ezekiel 8.14, and the Sumerian kings list. In Hebrew and Aramaic, Dumuzi is called Tammuz. He is mentioned in many ancient stories and myths. Dumuzid was the harvester and shepherd. The Grim Reaper is often depicted as the harvester in certain stories, but it's crucial to acknowledge that the tool he wields, a scythe, 
has a large blade and is actually used for harvesting oats and grain. It was not intended to represent the death or killing of people. Instead, the harvester should be viewed as a provider of food that sustains life and brings rebirth to the land. Upon further research, it became clear to me that Dumuzid is associated with the sun and the summer solstice because he dies every year in summer, like the sun, wheat, and grain, only to be reborn, symbolizing permanent renewal. A significant turning point in history was when humans formed a symbiotic relationship with horses and stopped hunting horses as food. Over time, farmers and shepherds began keeping mares close by for their valuable contributions. Warriors preferred stallions because of their robustness and readiness for travel and battle. Typically, if a horse were pregnant, it would be during winter and give birth shortly after spring. Although pregnant mares were unsuitable for battle, they could still be cared for by a shepherd who could contribute to the village's food supply. References to mares and shepherds can be found in numerous ancient texts, reflecting the importance of this relationship throughout history. June 22nd through July 21st is a goatfish. My goal is to create a sense of suspense and excitement as we approach a highly anticipated revelation. This momentous occasion is historic, as the true significance of the goatfish and scales or libra has remained a mystery for thousands of years. I am determined to convey this information in a captivating and unforgettable way. Can you guess what specific animal this symbol truly represents? Don't bother searching for information on long day breeders. Instead, consider researching seasonal breeders for a clue. July 22nd through August 21st shows a tipped vase pouring water. It is widely recognized that these regions are prone to flash floods from June to September each year, which can cause significant harm to towns, cities, and infrastructure. To represent this danger, we show a tipped vase with the water uncontrolled. Its contents gush out with great force, unleashing a surge of water that brings chaos and fertility. This abrupt occurrence serves as a warning symbol, reminding us of the hazards of flash flooding and the possibilities it presents. This serves as a poignant reminder to remain alert and ready if storms appear. In Egypt, the flooding of the Nile on August 15th is still celebrated as it brings fertility to the land during otherwise arid months, thanks to heavy monsoon rains. As part of my research, I have looked into the common occurrence of flash floods in the Fertile Crescent and surrounding areas in the summer months. Therefore, it is crucial to remain vigilant and take appropriate precautions in flooding. It's worth noting that other regions worldwide also face the risk of severe flooding during this period. Water is the giver of life to the earth, nourishing the land and all living beings. It is an indispensable element that sustains life and represents the vital force of nature. Let us cherish and protect this precious resource, for water is truly the essence of life. Water gives fertility to the land. Water is essential for all life on earth. Water is life. Water gives fertility to the land. The next sign is two fish together. I am a fisherman, and I look forward to the fishing season. August 22nd through September 21st shows two fish. Bait, timing, and location are crucial to successful fishing. I have reasons and ideas that the fish in question could be the red mullet. The red mullet was often called the goatfish in ancient times and still is to this day. It was a chance of being the fish in question because it had the name the goatfish, the previous symbol's name. This fish species was historically referred to as the goatfish because of their distinctive barbels resembling a goat's beard. They spawn in late spring to summer, but it doesn't mean the mating of fish. It meant catching fish at the best time possible. The best fishing for the red mullet or goatfish is between August and October, which works perfectly with the fertility wheel. The red mullet could be the fish represented, and it works, and I would be content using this type of fish. But because I am a fisherman and like to fish, I want to add a few more fish you can catch during August and September near the Fertile Crescent. August and September are excellent times to catch a variety of fish. The fishing seasons for carp, catfish, and bonito extend from spring to the end of September. Sea bass can be caught during their fishing season, which typically spans from May to September. 
The best time to fish for those looking to catch tuna is from June to October, while grouper can be caught between June and November. The fishing season for Dorado, yellowtail, sardines, and a few other species begins in August. Knowing the peak fishing seasons for different types of fish can help ensure a more successful fishing trip. This time of year presents an opportunity to catch a large number of fish that can be preserved for several months using techniques like smoking and salting. These preserved fish can be a valuable source of protein during the winter months. Additionally, incorporating fish parts into gardening and farming practices can offer numerous benefits as a natural fertilizer. This eco-friendly and sustainable option enriches the soil with essential nutrients, promoting healthy plant growth and increased yields. Utilizing fish parts as fertilizer is a bright and responsible approach to cultivation. August through September is the prime fishing season for many species of fish. It is also my favorite time to fish. Dumuzid was recognized as both a shepherd and a fisherman, and he likely instructed others on the techniques and timing required for successful fishing. Now we turn the wheel to the fall equinox. The fall or autumn equinox is a significant celestial occurrence that signals the northern hemisphere's shift from summer to autumn. This happens when the sun crosses the equator and commences its journey toward the southern hemisphere. This event usually transpires around September 22nd and represents the point when the length of daylight and nighttime are equal. However, from September 23rd, darkness overtakes the light. This results in lower temperatures, the cessation of plant food production, and changing tree leaves colors. This pattern will persist until the spring equinox, which marks the beginning of a new cycle. September 22nd through October 21st is represented by the sheep or goat. Sheep and goats are categorized as short day breeders, meaning their reproductive activity starts during the shortening of days in late summer and early autumn, as per their natural environmental conditions. Shorter days can trigger the mating season, commonly known as the rut in many species. Birth in several species of seasonal breeders typically occurs shortly after new green growth appears, which provides food for the females and allows them to produce milk for their young. The warmer temperature during this period reduces the risk of the young becoming hypothermic. The gestation period for goats and sheep is usually around 150 days. The rut or breeding season is when certain animals exhibit mating behaviors, including sheep, goats, deer, bison, antelopes, pronghorns, camels, moose, and more. The timing of the rut varies among species and the local environment, but it generally occurs during the fall. During the rut, males compete for access to females, and both sexes may show increased aggression and territorial behavior. The timing of the rut varies across different species and is often determined by the length of the pregnancy or gestation period. This is typically planned, so that the young are born during the spring when food and water are abundant. October 22nd through November 21st is the cow, bull, or ox. A breeding season for bulls can occur in the fall, with October and November being common months for mating. This period is characterized by cooler temperatures and shorter daylight hours, which can trigger hormonal changes in the bulls and make them more sexually active. I checked the internet to confirm the timing of mating for cows or bulls, which should follow after the sign for sheep or goats. According to my research, some cows give birth in the fall, also known as fall calving cows, and typically mate between October and December. This breeding period allows the cows to become pregnant before the arrival of harsh winter weather. It also reduces the likelihood of pregnant cows losing their pregnancies due to poor body conditions. Fall calving cows can lose some weight during the winter season. Some beef cows give birth during the fall, with most calves being born between August and November. Birthing at this time permits the young calves to reach a suitable age in early spring when they can graze on the rapidly growing spring grass, replacing their mother's milk. This information intrigued me, given my experiences around dairy cows differed slightly. November 22nd through December 21st, is the newborns. In our quest to comprehend the intricacies of fertility and reproduction, the connection between the woman symbol and the newborn's subsequent arrival nine months later 
is a noteworthy indicator. This correlation underscores the profound significance of the fertility wheel and represents the culmination of the wheel's intricate workings. By acknowledging this association, we will gain valuable insights into the mechanisms governing fertility, further deepening our understanding of the fertility wheel and its fundamental functions. I would like to share some information about the winter solstice. The winter solstice, an annual astronomical event, signifies the shortest amount of daylight and the longest night of the year when the sun is at its lowest point in the sky. Usually occurring around December 22nd in the Northern Hemisphere, it marks the beginning of winter and is a significant cultural and spiritual event for people worldwide. The term solstice originates from the Latin words sol and sisteri, meaning sun and to stand still, respectively. This refers to the time when the sun reaches its highest or lowest point in the sky, appears to pause before reversing its path, and holds great importance in many cultures. At this time, the sun appears to rise and set at the same location on the horizon for three consecutive days before gradually moving to a higher point in the sky as the days progress. This effect is due to the Earth's axial tilt, which causes the sun's apparent path across the sky to vary throughout the year. The appears to stand still from December 22nd, December 25th. The sun gradually rises one degree daily from around December 25th until the summer solstice on June 22nd, marking the progression of seasons from winter to summer due to the Earth's tilt and rotation. This gradual rise of the sun symbolizes hope and renewal for many cultures, as it represents the return of warmth, light, and growth. Historically, the winter solstice was immensely significant as it marked the beginning of the famine months, January to April in the Northern Hemisphere or July to October in the Southern Hemisphere. I believe these four gods actually represented their seasons to these ancient cultures, Gestinana for the winter solstice, her older brother Dumuzid for the summer solstice, Inanna for the spring equinox, and her twin, UTU, for the autumn equinox. They each represented one quarter of the sun's journey around the earth. December 22nd through January 21st, the sign of the crab. The primary season for all crab species is October through January, when they're often at their largest and populations are highest after spawning. Since food was not being produced, this alternate source of sustenance could be life-saving. I worked near Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco for some time, and I gained an understanding of the annual crab season. January 22nd through February 21st shows the peak period when lions mate. Cats are known to be seasonal breeders, meaning they have specific periods during which they are more likely to mate. In general, cats are influenced by the changing seasons and daylight length. In the Northern Hemisphere, the typical mating season for cats begins in winter or early spring. The lion's mane is a distinctive feature that sets it apart from other cats' depictions, knowing this shows a large cat and the possible dangers these wild cats can cause. Unfortunately, lions are scarce north of Egypt nowadays, and we have to search for national lion parks or reserves to catch a glimpse of these majestic creatures. Unlike some other animals, lions do not have a specific breeding season, and they often coordinate breeding activities, particularly after a pride takeover, raising the young together. In northeastern South Africa, Kruger National Park is a significant conservation reserve where lions can be observed. Birth peaks have been noted in Kruger, February, April, and the Serengeti, March, July. According to national parks, Lions time their mating activities based on seasonal weather patterns and prey availability. In both parks, lions mate in March, April, and sometimes May. Lions have a gestation period of 110 days, so the peak in births in the Serengeti, the northernmost reserve, usually occurs in April and May, and 110 days before April is in January. This explains why the lion is located between January 22nd and February 21st, but there may be variations. Drawing a tiger can be challenging without it resembling a domestic cat. To enhance my knowledge of the subject, I studied the mating behaviors of lions and tigers, two large feline species. When do tigers mate? 
Tigers tend to mate more frequently during the colder months of November through April. Additionally, tigers in temperate zones typically only breed during the winter, usually from late December through February. January to February is a suitable time frame to represent the mating season of large cats. However, depending on your location, tigers often mate during the same winter month as lions. I have purposely left out the two signs human beings have never understood before. Now I will begin the reveal. Let's start with the goatfish. June 22nd through July 21st is the peak of summer. After researching the mating cycles of many animals, I noticed that few mate during the middle of summer. I was curious about the meaning of the goatfish symbol in the fertility wheel. At first, I considered it might represent a goat or a fish, but goats are short day breeders and fish wouldn't appear one after the other on the fertility wheel. I had to think creatively and approach the issue from different angles, not just to think outside of the box and out of several circles. I do enjoy a good puzzle. As I researched further, I had a revelation about several dreams I had about lizards. I typed into an internet search, lizard in June, July, or August in the Middle East. To my amazement, I discovered that the spiny-tailed iguana is traditionally hunted in Saudi Arabia during their mating season of June, July, and August. They are even called the fish of the desert. June 22nd to July 21st is now the spiny-tailed lizard, no longer a goatfish. Spiny-tailed lizards are long-day breeders, and their peak mating is in July. This mating time is a perfect fit for the fertility wheel. Their mating season is the primary time to catch them, from May until September. They are known as the fish of the desert, which makes the name goatfish appropriate but I will continue to refer to them as spiny-tailed iguanas. I hope people are clear for the next several thousand years. In that particular area, the spiny-tailed iguana has been given several names including dab, desert fish, and fish of the desert. Consuming this lizard is nothing unusual for the desert inhabitants, who have been doing so for thousands of years and even utilize certain body parts for medicinal purposes when other meats were scarce or unavailable, or if individuals chose not to consume domesticated animal meat, the dab lizard provided a reliable source of sustenance. The goatfish represented a vital food source necessary for summer survival, when other food sources were not readily available. This food source connects to tradition in the Fertile Crescent region. In the past, the central region of the Arabian Peninsula faced significant financial difficulties before the emergence of oil extraction as an economic activity. As a result, many people could not afford to eat meat regularly. The spiny-tailed lizard became a viable source of protein as it was easy to obtain, serving as a substitute for traditional meats like camel or sheep. Some individuals liken the taste of the dab to that of fish, while others find it even more delicious. Unlike fish, the dab does not emit any odors during the cooking process. From June 22nd to July 21st is no longer the goatfish and is now represented by the spiny-tailed lizard. Now the last sign, the most crucial sign. This sign is the linchpin that holds the wheel in place. The scales are always the month after the woman in every zodiac. That time is now from March 22nd to April 21st, but I need to find the perfect replacement animal. The last and most important sign is now revealed. If you remember further back in this presentation, I mentioned that after recognizing the symbol of the scales had no relevance to agriculture or breeding, I realized it wasn't a fit on the fertility wheel. I replaced it with a cow as I knew that was the animal's mating season. This observation was based on my experience of living near farms having farmer friends, and knowing cows mating season. However, I needed clarification about the placement of another cow or bull in November. I initially thought it indicated the gestation period of cows, similar to human pregnancy and childbirth, but that was not the case. The cattle symbols aim to represent cow breeding seasons, not gestation times. You can search online for more information if you're interested in learning about cow breeding. According to most farmers, cow breeding season usually starts or occurs from March to April. However, this time frame could vary depending on the cow breed and the region's climate. 
Farmers must ensure that cows are fully mated by May at the latest to optimize the breeding process and increase the number of offspring. Cattle producers often opt for a specific calving season, with spring being the most common choice. Almost 80% mate at this time, followed by fall. This means that there are two distinct mating seasons for cattle. March 22nd to April 21st is officially the cow, bull, or ox, the same as October 22nd, November 21st. The cattle represent the two peak or best times during the year for cattle breeding. I was initially content, but then those nagging thoughts that tell you you are still not done yet arose. There was more to learn. I had recurring dreams indicating my quest for knowledge was incomplete, and I had to learn about agriculture in the Fertile Crescent. I now became curious to learn about agricultural practices in this area. I began to look at farming and researching agricultural charts in the Fertile Crescent, but I knew I had solved the second part of the guide when I saw Turkey's crop calendar. Excitedly, I examined the wheat planting times of Turkey's crop calendar, which occurred seven months apart, and found that they aligned perfectly with the cattle symbols on the fertility wheel. The optimal planting cycle for both wheat varieties falls between March through April and October through November, the exact same months as the cattle mating seasons and their corresponding symbols. Finally, I understood the agricultural significance of the cattle symbols on the wheel, and their placement in mid-March and mid-October now made perfect sense. The man and horse symbols on the wheel and their placement in mid-June now made perfect sense. They represent the harvesting of wheat and barley. It was almost too perfect, and it bothered me as it began to occur to me that perhaps it had been forgotten. It was the perfect guide, and it began to dawn on me that this was possibly pre-flood knowledge from deep history. The fertility wheel is a tool for shepherds, farmers, and ranchers. The fertility wheel holds great value in guiding agricultural practices. My discovery filled me with such joy that I trembled with excitement. The symbols of the cow and bull align with the peak mating seasons of these animals and the optimal planting periods for spring and winter wheat, barley and rye. The horse represents the mare's peak mating time, and the man represents the time to harvest. The cattle signs also indicate the right time to apply animal manure to the soil for fertilization. Cattle can be helpful in tilling the land for growing crops, making them a pivotal part of the process. They are considered the most significant animal in planting oats and grains. Cows and bulls are capable of breeding and producing offspring, while oxen being castrated are infertile and unable to participate in breeding. Initially, I hesitated to include an ox in the fertility wheel, but I ultimately decided to do so because of its significance in every stage of the agricultural cycle. As a result, the wheel includes a cow in the center to represent newborn calves and milk. The spring breeding season is represented by a sign for cow, bull, or oxen, while another sign for cow, bull, or oxen represents the winter breeding season. Upon realizing that I had unlocked an ancient and enduring enigma, I felt great satisfaction and joy. I was so elated that I began dancing and pondering my own significance in this discovery. Specifically, I wondered why I had been deemed worthy of uncovering the secrets of the fertility wheel. If I have a message, my personal message is simple. I implore you to exhibit kindness, empathy, and compassion towards all living beings within reason. It is essential to prioritize knowledge and impart it to the younger generation, covering diverse subjects such as science, mathematics, and agriculture. Additionally, I advocate for charitable giving, which should be obligatory for those with sufficient financial means. Finally, I urge you to embrace differences, show empathy and respect towards all people, including those who are dissimilar to you, and do your utmost best to be a good, principled person. That was the presentation. If you have found this interesting, I will be sharing the Tree of Origin, which is also an amazing tool or guide that, for some reason, is not known. I have so much more to share with people, and I wish you all a good year. May peace be with you. Thank you for your patience. Stephen D. Manning, February 22nd, March 21st, Maiden, Woman, Goddess, March 22nd, April 21st, Cow, Bull, Ox, April 22nd, May 21st, Scorpion, May 22nd, June 21st, Man on a Horse, 
June 22nd, July 21st, Spiny Tailed Lizard, July 22nd, August 22nd, Tipped Vase, Flowing Water, August 22nd, September 21st, Two Fish September 22nd, October 21st, Sheep, Goat, Deer, October 22nd, November 21st, Cow, Bull, Ox, November 22nd, December 21st, Newborns, December 22nd, January 21st, Crab, January 22nd, February 21st, Lion. Firstly, I'd like to extend my gratitude for taking the time to watch the extended version of this video. I want to apologize in advance if some of these videos appear less than perfect, but there's a valid explanation for why. Approximately 11 days before my presentation was scheduled, my region was hit by a hurricane, which left us without power for a grueling three days. It's quite an amusing twist, considering the context of the fertility wheel and the fact that the flood I found myself in occurred on August 20th during the symbol for flood warning. That is truly poetic and puts me behind schedule. As part of my endeavor to generate the necessary funds, I'll be selling merchandise. My ultimate goal is to accumulate sufficient resources so that if I ever come across distressing situations, I might possess the ability to establish a foundation dedicated to offering long-term assistance. You can find the merchandise available for purchase at www.fertilitywheel.store, visit www.fertilitywheel.com, or the Fertility Wheel channel on YouTube for more videos. I intend to assemble a diverse group of individuals hailing from various cultures, religions, and geographic locations around the globe. Our primary mission will be to assist those in need, whether it be by providing food or water whenever possible. My new group can be found at www.fodfw.org or Fellowship of the Fertility Wheel. Thank you again. My name is Stephen D. Manning. Hi, my name is Steve. Thank you for watching. There's so much more to come. Please subscribe.